Thank you for your loving presence through your loving word, through your Holy Spirit. Come and speak to us, your children, for apart from you, we have no life. We surrender and submit ourselves into your gracious hand. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. A very good morning to each one of you. It is nice to be back, to be with you, to be able to share the word of God with you once again. Last month, we went through the theme of connecting with God, about us being part of the true wine as the branches and how much our lives are completely dependent whether we acknowledge or not we are dependent upon God for living a life on this earth and obviously unto eternal life so today and this month we began on a theme of connect but connecting with people specifically with God's people and that is the theme that we will look at but we will specifically focus on Psalm 133 which can be a familiar psalm but I believe the Lord will speak afresh to us this morning for the next two weeks there is a famous saying that goes as this no man is an island entire of itself what it actually means is you cannot be alone. You're not meant to be alone. God made us into units, whether it be family, whether it be community, whether in it's in your workplace or school, no man is an island. But the reality today is everyone seems to live for himself even if it extends beyond himself it goes to within the family unit alone just ask yourself why are you here today why are we here meeting together are we here because of our desire to be in the fellowship of God's people it could be but many times our gathering could be just because of something I want. I was speaking at a discipleship seminar yesterday morning and during my session I asked, what are the reasons that people come to church? And most of the reasons that were given were very self-centered. It is about me. It is about what God can speak to me. It is about the Holy Communion for me. And it is much, much, much about the individual alone but that is not why we gather as a church as a people of God and obviously the symbol of the cross when we look at the symbol of the cross it reminds us of two things the vertical and the horizontal relationship that we have the vertical is with God and us but in the horizontal is with us and others with God's people and that is intentional I believe in the symbol that has been chosen as our Christian symbol in that sense so Psalm 133 verses 1 to 3 I read for your benefit how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity it is like precious oil poured on the head running down on the beard running down on Aaron's beard, running down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. So in verse 1, it says how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. The psalmist brings out this word to us and the psalmist here is King David himself who was a shepherd boy now a king leading God's people the nation of Israel so as he brings this word 
he meditates and the Holy Spirit imparts this word into his heart and he proclaims he says how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity God's people unity and it is expressed in such words as it is good it is something that is wonderful but not only good it is pleasant it brings joy it brings great comfort and strength unity is beautiful this unity is very ugly both can be seen both can be experienced but it is unity that brings greater joy greater goodness to the body of Christ but also beyond because the unity becomes a witness a witness to those who see those who see get attracted to this unity as we would see later but here I want to stress that the word says how good and pleasant it is when God's people it doesn't say meet together it doesn't say that it is very specifically saying when God's people live together in unity it is a unity not by touch and go unity hello hi unity not such unity but it is a unity where God's people are living together of course in the modern church it is so different from the early church in the modern church we meet together occasionally once a week and if you go for cell groups yes you meet more than a week once month monthly once you fellowship but living together in unity imagine your own homes your own families and I'm sure if you're a normal family you will have your ups and downs your joyful moments at the same time the difficult moments but we continue to live together in unity whether it be husband and wife or parents and children or extended family members but it is difficult to live together in unity but when you live together in unity the Bible says it is good it is pleasant we see this in the early church where the Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verses 44 to 47 for your reference but for our reading I take 44 to 45 alone all the believers all the believers remember there were 120 who were gathered in the upper room to pray they prayed together they met together for 10 days and after 10 days of praying Pentecost came Peter preached how many were converted 3,000 people and this 3,000 people so assuming the number is accurate so we have 3,120 people coming together how do you accommodate such a huge crowd what do you do how do you manage them and then the Bible says all the believers were together and had everything in common they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need pastor this is an imaginary church this cannot happen today that could be the mind voice that you hear as you hear the scripture this could be something not relevant for today yes because we have changed God has not we have changed from what God intended us to be oh they had everything in common not only they gathered in common they were living for one another they were living thinking about one another thinking about that brother thinking about this sister they were living for one another what a good 
and pleasant experience. What a wonderful church to be in. Do you want to be in such a church? Our church, our gathering, our fellowship can also be transformed by the Holy Spirit to become like that. Or some might say, sell property, no way. Give everything. If you ask me to give, I might give something out of my wallet, but not my whole wallet. Even if I give my wallet, I might take all the precious things out and give. But you see, their giving was sacrificial. So beautiful. Something that we need to admire and adore and obviously humbly obey and follow. Unity in the early church is something we can admire. As we go on on verse 2, David gives us an imagery of that unity. He says, It is good and pleasant when God's people live in unity. It is like, it is an example, it is a biblical imagery that he gives. It is like precious oil. It is not normal cooking oil. It is not normal hair oil. It is precious oil. What type of precious oil is he being referring to? He says it is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. What particular occasion is he referring to? He is referring to the anointing, the consecration of the high priest. This you can read in Exodus chapter 27. What is meant to happen? So he is referring to this incident. It may some sound unrelated, but he's giving a precious word to us this morning. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us about unity and the anointing of the high priest. What is the relation here? As Moses anoints Aaron, he pours the precious oil, the oil of anointing that has been specifically prepared according to God's command. And he is to do that after being cleansed by water. He sits and is anointed. The oil is poured onto his head. I'm not sure any of us have this experience of being having this oil bath. You're seated and the oil is poured. Those who used to celebrate Deepavali would remember this. I remember that. Oil being poured from the head and it just flows out to you. But as he does that, he's seated there with his robes on, the high priestly robes on, and everything full, the set, is on him. And the Bible clearly says it is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. The anointing oil refers to God's consecrating presence. As you can see, there are two precious stones on the shoulder of the high priest. With the names of the twelve tribes, six on each side, inscribed on the stones. So as the anointing flows, it anoints the whole part of the head to down. It basically speaks about God's anointing coming down upon God's people. In a very symbolic way, David is speaking this. Is this relevant to what Jesus has spoken to us in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20? Yes. Where Jesus says, where two or three gather in my name there am i with them 
Obviously, if you read the context of scripture, it is in the context of discipline, disciplining someone. But even in that context, Jesus promises of his presence. So when two or three are gathered in God's name, in his name, it is good and pleasant because God is in our midst. He comes to be present. He enjoys the presence of his children coming together in unity. So that is a, such a great blessing to gather together. But in the modern church, all over the world, it is not such. It is moved away. This is a comic strip kind of joke. But I hope it provokes us to think. It is a revised version of what Jesus has said. It says, where two or three gather together and draw up a constitution and bylaws and incorporate themselves into a non-profit corporation, there I am in the midst of them. How our priorities have changed. How church has changed. The modern church, as it were, has become so different from the church that Jesus wanted us to make and to be, where two or three are gathered in His name. The focus is God and Jesus alone. So when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. The Holy Spirit comes down on the day of Pentecost, not when they were fighting, when, not when they were in discord, not when they were disunited, but when they were together in one place, in one heart, in one mind. They were talking the same thing. They were spraying the same language. They were seeking God. As you come this morning, as you gather today, you may have come with your own goals and intentions in mind. What can I get today? What will I get? We see of those who come just to receive the Holy Communion and they leave. This happens in many churches, obviously in Anglican churches. But what is the Holy Communion? The Holy Communion is about the sacrament, but about receiving the sacrament as the body of Christ. It is not about the individual alone. It is about the body of Christ. The body of Christ gathers together. We are all parts of that body. We receive that together. So when you receive that cup, you remember that I'm not drinking it alone. I'm drinking it with my brother, with my sister. They come, come from different families, from different backgrounds. But we are all one family. So what it means is, you don't rush off. What it means is, there is a communion of believers. There's a gathering, there's fellowship. And it is a holy communion because God is present in this fellowship of believers. So may that transform our understanding and perspective and perception of the Holy Eucharist. It is not about you. It is about us. It is about us in the presence of God. So in conclusion, it is good and pleasant when God's people live together in unity. Despite our differences, despite our own perspectives, when we come together, God's presence, God's anointing is in the midst where Jesus promises and he fulfills, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. So let us desire, let us pray, let us make steps to be connected with God's people, to go beyond our comfort zones, 
during our coffee fellowships to go beyond and to say hi, hello, and to meet and mingle with another person. I want to encourage and urge you today as you pray for yourself, your family, pray for the other person, pray for the person who's seated on your right, whom is a stranger to you. Pray for them. Pray for them that as you pray, God's presence will meet us in this unity. Let us pray. Father, we desire this good and pleasant experience as your people, we live together in unity. Let it be the, like the precious anointing oil that is poured on the high priest. Let it be poured on us to bring about a greater unity, a greater anointing, a greater breakthrough and revival into our lives. Come, Lord Jesus, meet your people through this service and beyond. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen.